The main reason we do mathematics at any level is so that we can solve real world problems. So we can use the math that we learn to solve so-called word problems. Unfortunately, if you talk to most students and ask them what they dislike most about their current math class, many of them will say that they can't do word problems. Um, this is often a result of not really understanding the concepts of, at the elementary level, for example, arithmetic. Now, we've already talked about models and interpretations of arithmetic, so we really have got a foundation for the arithmetic that we are going to need to know to be, to be able to interpret word problems. And that oftentimes is the trickiest part of word problems, because really, at the elementary level, we have to translate the words of a problem to the arithmetic that is necessary to solve the problem. And even if students are very adept at the arithmetic part of it, if they're not able to make this translation correctly, they're not even going to need to know what arithmetic they need to use to solve a given problem. So what the model drawing process does is it gives us a bridge between the words and the arithmetic in the form of a bar diagram. So you recall when we discussed models and interpretations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, in each case we drew bar diagrams that could be used to illustrate and connect to a particular arithmetic operation. And the hope is, is that if we can now see word problems and in our word problems draw bar diagrams that, um, that reflect the words in the problem, we can now use our knowledge of our, again, models and interpretations of arithmetic to translate the diagrams that we've drawn to the arithmetic that's necessary to solve the problem. That's our hope, at least. So we start with maybe some early and elementary school problems, maybe second and third grade problems, that just involve basic addition and subtraction. Again, many students might be able to read a problem like this and figure out just from the words the correct operation. For the students that can't, however, we are hoping that if they can draw a picture, a diagram, a bar diagram that is, that reflects the situation, then they can go back and draw back on their knowledge of that operation to make a connection to the correct operations that is necessary. So let's take a look at a pretty simple addition problem. Uh, James made $17 selling lemonade on Saturday and $26 on Sunday. How much money did he make altogether? Again, we hope that the majority of our students are going to be able to just read this problem and uh, figure out that the correct arithmetic needed to solve the problem is 17 plus 26. However, suppose a student can't do that. Hopefully, a student will be able to draw a diagram that reflects this situation. So, as we did when we talked about addition originally, we can illustrate what's happening here with a bar. We can take as a bar, we can draw a bar that represents the total amount of money that he earned, and we can split it into the $17 that he earned on Saturday, the $26 that he earned on Sunday. We are in the habit of using question marks to denote unknowns, so we would denote the entire length of the bar with a question mark. And hopefully a student that can draw a picture like this, if they didn't know the correct arithmetic just from the words, can look at this picture, connect this to what they first learned about addition, and realize that the correct arithmetic indeed is 17 plus 26. The only explanation necessary in this problem is that this arithmetic comes from this picture. It's very, very straightforward with problems like this, these one-step problems involving addition and subtraction. Okay. And of course, I'm not going to write it here, but we would write a complete sentence answer as we're always told to do. What about a subtraction problem? We recall that unlike addition, there's actually three interpretations of subtraction. So we can, subtraction can be a little bit confusing, a little less straightforward than uh, an addition problem like the one we just solved. Again, our hope is that our students are going to be able to read this problem. A class of 26 students contains 11 boys. How many girls are in the class? Our hope is that our students are just going to be able to read the problem and directly interpret the fact that 26 minus 11 is ne the necessary arithmetic to solve this problem. But if a student can't make that connection, then hopefully they can draw a bar that models the situation and looks like a bar that we discussed when we first introduced subtraction, the interpretations of subtraction. So again, if the bar that we draw represents the entire class, the given information is a little bit different in this problem as it was in the last. Here we are given the entire class is 26. We are also given that one part of the class 
is 11, and we are interested in the other part that makes the whole. We recognize this as part whole subtraction, and hopefully a student that can draw this picture will associate this picture with the arithmetic 26 minus 11. And again, that is the whole idea. We would not be asking these, these word problems if our students could not perform the computation 26 minus 11. Okay, the hard part of these problems is going to be going from the words and figuring out the 26 minus 11 is indeed the correct arithmetic needed to solve the problem. Hopefully for those students that can't go directly from the words to the arithmetic, the bar diagram serves as a nice transition.